I'm Cameron McDougall. I work in Phoenix, Arizona at the Barrow Neurological Institute. So the issue I wanted to talk about today was the place of the flow diverters versus stents and coils for sidewall aneurysms. And I think you have to uh, answer this in two ways. One is what you think is going to happen and one is what we actually know today. Most of the trials and all of the data have, for the flow diverters have been based upon the larger aneurysms. Aneurysms in almost all of the trials have been greater than 10 millimeters. Uh, the results have been spectacular. The, pulse, the PUFFS results coming out uh, just this year with the five-year follow-up really show no recurrences at all in any of the aneurysms that were completely occluded. So that's very difficult to argue against those results. At the same time, if you use uh, coils and stents for the same purpose, it becomes a much more complicated procedure. That's something that we've used for many years. It's tried and true. We've had good results with it, but clearly the flow diverters are an easier device. What's missing is really looking at the smaller aneurysms and seeing if the results are the same, uh, if the occlusion rates are the same, and similarly if the long-term results are the same, while, at the, while also having the very low complication rate that we've managed to achieve with stents and coils. In terms of the uh, antiplatelet medications, it's pretty much a wash. In terms of price for the devices, it's pretty much a wash. So I think if one really looks at the arc of how things are playing out, it's very likely that the flow diverters will be replacing stents and coils for all sidewall aneurysms.